patriot, a person who vigorously supports their country and is prepared to defend it against an enemy or detractor. When you hear this word, a list of patriots usually comes to your mind. Many start with George Washington, probably considered America's greatest patriot for all his actions during our Revolutionary War, which won us our independence from England. Here in Arizona, Pat Tillman often comes to mind because he graduated from ASU and gave up a high-paying football career with the Arizona Cardinals to serve his country and ultimately lost his life. Nowhere in the definition, however, does it say a patriot has to be famous. For me, since attending a Peoria City Council meeting in November 2012, I first think of 19-year-old Specialist Robert John Vineski. His decision to enlist in the Army during a time of war makes him a patriot. His extreme acts of valor during his service define the word patriot. Robert John Vineski was born June 17, 1990. From the time he was a young boy, Pura, Arizona native Robert John Vineski wanted to serve in the Army. This was his dream because his father served in the Vietnam War. Even during his time attending Sunrise Mountain High School, Robert carried this dream. His friends would describe him as everybody's favorite person to be around. They would always give him a hard time about wanting to be in the Army. His family tried to persuade him not to join. Both his family and friends were concerned for his safety. In spite of their objections, Robert joined the Army during a time of war, choosing to fight for his country. This, to me, makes him a true patriot. During his time in the Army, Robert John Dineski was called to serve in Afghanistan. While he was there, he served honorably on the battlefield. He was often on the front line during the battle and up front protecting his fellow soldiers behind him. He earned numerous awards and decorations for his service, becoming the most decorated soldier from Arizona since the Vietnam War. His last three were awarded posthumously. He received the Purple Heart given to soldiers wounded or killed in combat. He also received the Bronze Star given for an act of heroism in a combat zone. Finally, Robert received the Silver Star given for gallantry while in action against an enemy and is the third highest honor a soldier can receive. Robert John Vineski made the ultimate sacrifice for his fellow soldiers and country. During a firefight on January 16, 2010, two soldiers on Robert's platoon were severely injured. He repeatedly exposed himself to the enemy to draw their fire away from his helpless soldiers. One of the soldiers Robert was saving took four tries to get to safety. Due to Robert's selfish behavior, their lives were saved. He, unfortunately, was shot by the enemy and died. My social studies teacher has a poster on his wall with a quote saying, our greatest heroes are ordinary people doing extra ordinary things. This describes specialist Robert John Dineski wonderfully at the last few seconds of his life. He made the decision to save his fellow soldiers' lives rather than saving his own. Years from now, people may not remember the name Robert John Dineski, but I know many from the Peoria City Council meeting will. We all stood up, applauded, and had tears rolling down our cheeks as he was being honored by the city. From this day forward, every time I hear the word patriot, Specialist Robert John Dineski will be the first person I think of. He is not famous, but that does not make him any less a patriot. I don't know if I would be brave enough to join the army during a time of war, nor do I know how many people will be courageous enough to save a fellow soldier by sacrificing themselves. 19-year-old Robert John Dineski did this, and that, to me, defines the word patriot. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming. Patriotism is love of country, and there is one man who loved America enough to tear down this wall. Ronald Reagan was that man. Tear down this wall is meant for the demolition of the Berlin Wall in Germany. What it really showed was a man defeating the obstacles for what is right, much like Martin Luther King Jr., Abraham Lincoln's 13th Amendment, and President Reagan himself. Martin Luther King Jr. tore down the wall to equality. Just like for Ronald Reagan, it wasn't easy. It was risky. But they did it for love of country. And that is a true patriot. Martin Luther King Jr. was determined. He fought for equal rights, not just for his family, but for all of America. And do you know what we did to him? 
We insulted him, we arrested him, and we brought violence to his peace. But he had faith in us, in America, that we would do the right thing until the day that he died. Martin Luther King Jr. was also motivated. He remembered a time when he was a child, a respected American, a police officer, call his father a boy. He knew it wasn't right, but it opened his eyes to the horror of our nation's ways and pushed him harder to help America. Finally, Martin Luther King Jr. was devoted. He used his spare time to peacefully protest the existence of segregation. Being peaceful and convincing eventually led to victory. Abraham Lincoln's 13th Amendment brought freedom to millions of Americans. Abraham Lincoln was a selfless man. When the South wanted to secede and keep slavery, he put up a fight. His life wasn't in danger, but he knew that slavery had to go. Abraham Lincoln was also hardworking. He was born in a log cabin and raised by a humble family, but he tore down the walls that blocked him and made it all the way to the White House and freed the slaves. Finally, Abraham Lincoln was a fighter. He wrote the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery and tried desperately to sway each congressman's vote to do so. Ronald Reagan spoke for democracy. He wanted democracy for all of Germany, not just one side of the wall, and he went beyond hopes to protest the Berlin Wall's existence. He was also confident. Although speechwriters and staff of the White House warned him of the danger of upsetting Gorbachev with the forceful line of tear down this wall, President Reagan stood strong. But now I say that tear down this wall is the symbol of patriotism, standing up for what you believe in and tearing down the walls that block you to do what is right. Finally, Ronald Reagan was brave. He knew the Berlin Wall had to fall, and he wrote just the speech to do it. Then on June 12, 1987, he traveled to the Brandenburg Gate in Germany to present it, even if it meant severe conflict with Russia. But in the end, he tore down the wall to victory. Tear down this wall was meant for the demolition of the Berlin Wall in Germany. What it really showed was a man defeating the obstacles for what is right. Much like Abraham Lincoln's 13th Amendment, Martin Luther King Jr., and President Reagan himself. When faced with adversity, these men answered the call. Martin Luther King Jr. protested for equal rights. Abraham Lincoln wrote the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. And President Reagan spoke for democracy. These men were heroes who did amazing things. But you don't have to be famous to do the right thing. Every day someone tears down a wall, whether it is picking up that extra bit of trash at lunch that everybody else left behind, or digging up the confidence to welcome the new kid into your class. Be that person every day and help make the world a better place, one wall at a time. The Field of Dreams, the show, the great American pastime, all these are phrases to describe a game that captures the American spirit like no other, baseball. What could be more patriotic than standing up at the start of a baseball game and singing the Star Spangled Banner, waiting with anticipation for those great words, play ball. It was baseball that allowed one of the most patriotic moments in American history. It happened on a sunny afternoon on April 25th, 1976. This was the day Rick Monday saved the American flag. Monday was an amazing baseball player. In his 19 seasons, the two-time All-Star hit a career high of 241 home runs and won a World Series. But none of his accomplishments were as significant as what he did that April day. It all began at Dodger Stadium. It was the fourth inning with the Dodgers at bat. Monday, playing for the Chicago Cubs at the time, was positioned in center field when all of a sudden, two people, a man and his 11-year-old son, hopped the railing onto the field and spread out the American flag in the grass. What at first seemed as a harmless act of country pride turned sour when the protesters began pouring lighter fluid onto the cloth. People at home could hear Vin Scully's voice commentating, 
wait a minute, there's an animal loose, two of them. I don't know what they're doing out there, but it looks like they're going to burn a flag. And Rick Monday takes it away from them. Monday, while his teammates were in shock, sprinted over to the protesters and snatched the flag away just before the match was struck. Later on, Monday admits that his anger towards the offenders was most likely reinforced by his six years in the U.S. Marine Corps Reserves, where he had learned to respect and honor the flag. But Monday did more than respect the flag that day. He risked himself for it. He allowed his anger towards the disgracers to escalate into an immense amount of bravery that forever marked him as not just some character on a baseball card, but as a true American hero. Some people might say, it's just some piece of cloth. What's the big deal? But there's so much more to it than that. There's a whole history of patriots and heroes embedded in the fabric. And that day, 1976, Rick Monday became one of them. For a few moments after the incident, the stadium was dead silent. Then a voice came from the stands, which was joined by another, which was joined by another. Soon there was a swelling chorus throughout the crowd as the song of God Bless America rang out clear as day. It was a moment of complete and utter unity between the citizens of our country, even if only for a short time. The protesters were escorted off the field and Monday was granted the flag as a reward. That game has stuck in the minds of all who have seen it. In fact, the Baseball Hall of Fame has recently named it one of the top 100 classic moments of the game. In 1981, Rick Monday was traded to the LA Dodgers and led them to a World Series against the Yankees. As for the flag, Monday still has it, kept in a safety deposit box, unwilling to be sold. Many investors still, though, have offered to buy the flag for offers exceeding a million dollars, but all have been denied. Monday proudly proclaims during an interview in 2006, it's not for sale. What this flag stands for can't be bought. It was a great day for America and a memorable moment for America's pastime. Rick Monday was a great athlete and a great patriot. For all that he accomplished in baseball and in life, he is mostly known for what he did that day at Chavez Ravine. Rick Monday later says that if that is all he is known for, then that is not such a bad thing at all. the prolonged strains of children's laughter and joy on an ordinary morning. Off to school they went, unaware of the rage of a gunman that was to unfold. That day, it was about the 20 children who could not fight and the six teachers who died, protecting little ones which was their pride, for even policies or certain rights couldn't save them. Yes, a candle was lit and a prayer was said, but we may never know what ignited his motive. Tonight, a parent sits in front of a tree, gazing at presents which would never be seen, heaving a sorrowful breath and a picture of a child whom was the love of their life, and entering a deserted bedroom longing for a child to roam. No more kisses at bedtime, nor sunrise. Tomorrow arises a new day with a regretful funeral on its way. This imagery, as many could perceive from the given clues, was that this was the heinous massacre that occurred at the school Sandy Hook in Newtown, Connecticut. It is imperative that our nation, during times like this, must unite to find our way out of this world full of contradicting dilemmas. Now, the United States is indeed a magnificent paradise which many citizens and passionate patriots of the U.S. take pride in.
but we must identify the root of the problem, which from the given visual is the Second Amendment that must receive consideration. The Second Amendment is the right of the people to keep and bear arms. This law is meant to protect the people. But if a law can endanger civilians, then we must implement a legislation to ban particular lethal weapons. For instance, many live in apprehension due to the terrifying thought of being attacked by an assault weapon, which is easily procured by many citizens. This precarious trend could initiate destruction. Now, for those ponderous minds, let's take a look at some statistics. There are approximately 5,459,240 assault weapons created annually, and we have made 90 million this past decade. Just last year, 47,856 victims have all perished due to weaponry misuse. Now, many inquire asking, what can be done? Well, recently, Tucson, Arizona celebrated the two-year anniversary of Gabby Gifford shooting, and something sensational happened. The city decided that they would inaugurate gun buyback from the community in exchange with a $50 gift card to Safeway. And frankly, it is the trivial changes that will evolve this nation. The life of a human is precious and of course is irreplaceable. And due to gun violence, we lose those precious lives too frequently. My notion is that the Second Amendment's definition has been distorted to the point of owning even guns used in the military, which has no place in civilian vicinities. And banning particular assault weapons in the hands of civilians is the first step. Today, a nation laments for the fallen, proclaiming a final valediction of hope Goodbye may seem forever. Farewell is like the end. But in my heart's a memory, and there you will always be. Thank you. The real American heroes today are the patriots who get up every day and have the courage to work hard and play by the rules. This quote given by Bill Clinton means that American citizens get up every day and do what they have to do and refuse to back down even if something happens along the way. Good morning, my name is Michaela Stepp. Our country's citizens' bravery was evident during the Virginia Tech massacre, 9-11, and the Sandy Hook Elementary shootings. On April 17th, 2007, Sung Hai Cho had, an had a mental and emotional relapse and murdered 32 and injured 17 of his fellow classmates in cold blood. Nobody knew that some college kid was going to wake up one morning and decide to murder his innocent fellow classmates. Imagine this. One day, you're sitting in your dorm or walking down the hall of your dormitory, and all of a sudden, you hear bam, 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 multiple gunshots. You hear screaming and running. Some of the screams and shouts you hear are cut short after gunshots. What do you do? Run and hide or call 911? One individual decided to call 911 that day and the police came immediately. Who knows what would happen if, some, if someone had not called 911 that day? Who knows how many more students would be laying in their caskets? Even though it is unknown who called 911, they are true American heroes because they did above and beyond. The 
The paramedics and police officers who arrived at the scene are also true American heroes because they mourned the lost and searched for the deceased. Every year since 2001, September 11th, it has been a mournful day in America's history. Three planes were hijacked and flown into three different locations. The passengers of Flight 93 are true American heroes because they were just doing what they had to do on their average day and they did not have to give their lives for hours. The passengers of Flight 93 distracted the terrorist bombers and flew the plane into an empty field, taking everyone's life that was on the plane. I believe that they are true heroes because they went above and beyond. <sighs> Upsettingly and recent, the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting devastated many citizens in America. Adam Lanza and all of his malicious anger went to an innocent school and began his massacre. He went into the office and began shooting. He killed the principal and office assistants. And then, still in his malicious anger, went into the first and second grade corridors, killing 26 people, 20 of them being mere children. Caitlin Roig is a true American hero because she was brave and strong for her students. She had to listen to innocent children saying things like, I don't want to die, I just want Christmas. Caitlin Roig is a true American patriot because she did above and beyond and risked her life for her students and kept hers in the process. These people are true American heroes and patriots because they did what they had to do every day and refused to back down along the way. I believe that if we had more people, like the passengers of Flight 93, the police officers and paramedics at the Virginia Tech Massacre, Tech Massacre and Caitlin Roig, that America could truly be a more secure place to live. Thank you. Good morning, judges, family, and fellow contestants. My name is Haley Smith, and today I'll be talking to you about our flag and its importance. I believe our flag is more than just cloth and ink. It is a universally recognized symbol that stands for liberty and freedom. It is the history of our nation, and it is marked by the blood of those who died defending it. This quote was written by John Thune. I feel exactly the same way about our flag. Men and women alike have lost our lives or loved ones for this country. These people are patriots. Their love for our country caused them to be extremely brave and sacrifice their livelihood to protect Americans. Our flag also has a great history behind it. There are 13 stripes representing the original 13 colonies. There are also 50 stars that represent the 50 states. When immigrants first came to America, it warmed their heart and encouraged them to see two symbols to new beginning. The first symbol is the Statue of Liberty, representing freedom. The second great symbol is the old glory flying in the wind, representing this great country. When immigrants saw these two symbols of America, it, it gave them hope because they now had liberties, possibilities, a home, and unlimited opportunity. Our, the first flag of the United States was made by Betsy Ross during the Revolutionary War. George Washington, otherwise known as General Washington at that time, and two of the representatives from the Continental Congress gave a rough design of the flag to Betsy in May 1776. The flag was raised on Prospect Hill with a salute of 13 guns and many loud cheers from the soldiers. When the soldiers saw the flag being raised, it gave them confidence and hope in winning the war and gaining independence from England. Approximately 620,000 Americans died during the Civil War. More Americans died in the Civil War than all the other, all the other American wars combined. Their sacrificial red blood of the American soldier is painted on the red stripes of the flag for everyone to see. We thank the men and women who defend our country and keep it safe so that we can live normal lives. In other countries, people don't have the luxury of safety and comfort. Many hope to survive to live another day. We as Americans have so much to be thankful for. 
Another way to show your patriotism and pride in our country is to vote. The percentage of eligible voters that vote is declining every election. Voting is an important right and freedom in which we should not take lightly. When you vote, you are getting a say in who you want to represent your ideas and thoughts and empower those who make the important decisions that may impact your life. We enjoy the freedoms and liberties America has to offer and is symbolized in our great American flag, the Stars and Stripes. You probably see the American flag many times during daily life. It comforts me personally to see so many Americans proudly displaying this great symbol. In conclusion, we must respect and honor our flag as a national symbol that represents Americans and our nation's history. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Marjorie Martinez. The absolute, true definition of patriotism is one's unconditional love to their country. The song, God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood is a magnificent example, especially in the verse, and I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died and gave that right to me. These powerful words are the most patriotic in this song. They're patriotic because they speak of a man giving up and risking his life for another man's rights such as the right to vote and the freedom of choice. These rights and freedoms we take advantage of every single day. The rights and freedoms that come at such a high price, but some of us are oblivious of it. We go day by day and the thought doesn't even cross your mind. You can say that we're spoiled even because we have absolutely no idea how it feels like to have no liberty. Imagine if we didn't have a say. But all of us are privileged to have a government that gives us the choice. We're privileged to have people who, like him, that risk their lives for us to have that choice as a freedom. And all those soldiers, men and women, risk their lives for strangers like you and I. Isn't that the most selfless thing? While they're fighting and facing undescribable horrors, we're in here, in safety, living a carefree life. Sure, we may have a hard life filled with bills, worries, and debt, but that does not compare to someone fighting for their country. They get shipped off where they don't know anyone in order to shoot and defend themselves whether they shoot at them and bomb them with tanks. Any step can mean a landmine. Then bam, you're gone in a blink of an eye. Do we have to deal with this? No, because they protect us. As strangers, we did absolutely nothing for them, but yet they risk their life. Some soldiers haven't even met their newborn babies yet. Mothers and fathers that had to leave so soon. They missed and are missing their kids' lives. Parents that have to communicate through letters, emails, and webcam instead of actually being there. Even some married soldiers have gotten divorced because they weren't there. Relationships and marriage are torn apart. Sometimes before you depart, someone you truly trust and admire says you'll always have a job there. But after they return, after so many years, they're out of a job because they couldn't have waited. Is that how we treat the people who risk their lives for our rights? Sometimes loved ones have passed away. Try to fathom how that would feel like, to be so far away when someone you hold dear takes their last breath. Some are homeless, and some do actually have a home. But both of them, homeless or fortunate, they both wake up in a cold sweat after dreaming of bombing and shooting still faintly hearing the boom and the screams. They are forever scarred. So as an American, don't let all those lives be in vain. Be grateful for all that we've had. Be proud that you are American, as it says in the song, because the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that away. The United States is a free place, so may or make your own choices and decisions to either wear this or go to school. All of us should be privileged to live in such a unique land. And I hope I inspired you to be grateful for all that we've had, to think of the true heroes. I want you to think about your freedom, to remember that it isn't free, and appreciate for all that we've had. Thank you.
morning, judges, fellow contestants, parents, and guests. In the poem, I Hear America Singing, Walt Whitman celebrated the everyday people who make this country what it is by comparing each person to a song that turns our country into a chorus. For Whitman, carpenters, farmers, and mothers caring for their children had a beauty that represents what is good about America. There is something honest and heroic about these people. As former President Bill Clinton once said, the real American heroes today are the citizens who get up every morning and have the courage to work hard and play by the rules. Let's celebrate those people. Some of our heroes are the ones who do charitable service, even when they don't know the people they're helping. Those people work so hard to make others' lives easier and happier. Larry Hartzell is an ears, nose, and throat specialist living in Little Rock, Arkansas. For most of the year, he works in a small clinic choosing to help poor people in place of making lots of money. Once a year, he and some other doctors travel to Guatemala to form free surgeries on children with cleft palates, giving them a chance in a more normal life. Larry believes in giving back. It's selfless and it's what our country needs to be more successful. Playing by the rules is often overlooked in sports. Athletes cheat to become a little faster or a little stronger or try to get away with things that are against the rules. Players for Western Oregon University and Central Washington University were competing in an NCAA tournament. Both teams had worked hard to get to the tournament and when Sarah Tucholsky slammed her first ever home run over the center field fence, it looked like Oregon might win the game. But as Sarah rounded first base, she stepped wrong and hurt her knee. She crawled back to first base, but could not move. Her teammates could not help her or would be an automatic out. If she got a runner, she'd be safe, but the runner would have to stay at first base. After a moment, Liz Wallace and Larry, Liz Wallace and Mallory Holtman, players for the other team, lifted Sarah off the base and carried her around the bases so she could get her home run. That act eventually cost Washington the game, but everyone on the field remembered the sportsmanship and integrity of players who wanted to do the right things. Nellie McCarthy is another great example of working hard and doing the right thing. Nellie grew up in Oklahoma during the Great Depression. Since her family was poor, she had to work instead of completing school. Working meant that she could help her family. As she grew older and worked at different jobs, she learned that doing an honest day's work would not only get her good pay, but would also help her keep her jobs. She eventually married and had children. Still poor, she and her children had to pick cotton to get money for the family. After many hard times, she got divorced and eventually remarried. She and her husband, Dan, began a janitorial and painting service in her 40s. They wanted to give people good service, so they always used the best materials and worked long hours. They eventually grew their company and had, and had many workers who had to do their best job. When they sold their company and retired, they were able to travel and enjoy themselves after all of their hard work. My father, their grandson, worked many summers for them, and he learned that hard work brought satisfaction. I have learned from their example, too. Sometimes we confuse idols like celebrities and athletes for heroes. They get lots of attention, even though the things they do aren't very good. They can even get, get away with things that regular people can't get away with. These people are not heroes. As President Clinton said, heroes have the courage to work hard and play by the rules. Let's be those heroes. Thank you.
the real American heroes are today. I know that probably the first thing that came into your mind was policemen and firefighters. Of course they're heroes, don't get me wrong. But like President Clinton once said, the real American heroes today are the citizens who get up every morning and have the courage to work hard and play by the rules. It is our everyday people who wake up at 4 a.m. to get ready for their jobs, work their tails off all day long, and then come home to barely slide past the bills and put food in their family's stomachs. Those are true heroes, true heroes that have determination. To become a true hero, you definitely need to have determination and think of what's happened in the past, what's going on in our lives today, and what we will become in the future. I want you to close your eyes and think back to the olden days. Picture what your ancestors looked like. What would they be doing? I'll tell you what I see. I picture a man hard at work, plowing in the field, sweat dripping from his brow. Why is he doing this? Why is he working so hard to come home with only cents a day? He has a wife and kids. Not one not even two, but four kids. They're yearning for him to return. They're so eager for their grumbling stomachs to grow silent. For those of the audience today who are the man of the house, imagine coming home, not being able to provide for your own spouse and children. Do you feel that in your stomach right now, your guts twisting? That's what your great-grandfather was feeling like every single night. They weren't working from nine to five. They were working from midnight to midnight. Now, if that doesn't show you pure determination, I don't know what will. And if you thought that was deep, just wait until I talk about what's happening now, right here, right now, today. I don't know about all of you, but I am proud to be an American. I know that we may rank high in debt or childhood obesity, but what a true great country is takes those negatives and turns them right back around. Don't forget that the real American heroes today are the citizens who get up every morning and have the courage to work hard and play by the rules. A great country is one full of citizens who never give up. A great country knows that there is always room for improving. And when people make that choice, it adds up. The dictionary defines determination as, and I quote, the act of coming to a decision, or of fixing, or of settling a purpose. I want you to think of that. Put that definition into your everyday lives. The act of coming to a decision, or of fixing, or of settling a purpose. What does that mean to you? How can you settle your purpose today? It's the little things that make a big difference. If we start changing what's happening now, who knows, maybe in the future, we can return America to her glory, where we excel in education, innovation, and concern for our fellow man. Never stop dreaming. The future. Now, I'm not talking about flying cars, although they're supposed to be available by the year 2030. Nor am I talking about us having aliens as neighbors. I'm talking about realistically. Where will our country be? What will it stand for in the future? One side of me is optimistically sure that we can have a bright future. While on the other hand, I'm terrified that if that bright light is lost, where will it be found again? Where will we find ourselves? Will we be lost in the dark? You know what I think our problem is? I think we expect too much. We expect dinner at our table before six and a pretty good one at that. We expect ourselves to get a good job that pays us good money. We expect people to have sympathy towards us if we had a bad day or a rough week. But do we share that same compassion towards others? Let's show them how America can improve, how well we can get right back on that horse and ride, what towards us, ride what, toward what made us a great country in the first place. As Clinton once said, the real American heroes today are the citizens who get up every morning and have the courage to work hard and play by the rules. Let's show them what we've learned from the past, 
what's going on today, and what we will commit to for a better future. This is what we can work on changing. If you won't, I will. Hey, maybe if I start, then I can lead one of you guys in this audience to start too. Let's pass this around like fresh junior high drama. Let's put our heads together and show the world that we possess pure determination. Welcome fellow contestants, parents, teachers, and judges. John Thune once said, I believe our flag is more than just cloth and ink. It is a universally recognized symbol that stands for liberty and freedom. It is the history of our nation and it's marked by the blood of those who died defending it. This quote reminds me of how important our flag truly is. Our flag is important because it has a rich history it represents America's freedom, and therefore, we need to respect the flag. The flag isn't just something we hang up in classrooms for decoration. It has deeper meaning, and we should look at it every day and think to ourselves how fortunate we are to live in America. Think about the history of our flag. It's part of our culture, and it symbolizes the history of our nation. Betsy Ross sewed the flag in 1777 at the request of George Washington. The 13 stripes represent the original 13 colonies. The 50 stars represent the 50 states we have today. The red stands for sacrifice, the white means liberty, and the blue represents loyalty and faith. We should all honor the flag because so many people lost their lives defending it and what it stands for. Although the shapes and colors aren't the only thing to the flag. Our flag also represents freedom. As Americans, we all have the freedom of speech. We're allowed to have our own opinions on different things like the economy. Another big right that we have is the freedom of religion. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, a Muslim, or believe in Judaism. The government doesn't have a say in that, just like they don't have a say on whether or not you want to protest about something like your job. Freedom of assembly allows any American citizen to march around buildings with big signs. As Americans, we have so many rights, and the flag should remind us of our freedom. Therefore, we need to respect the flag. If you dishonor it by letting it touch the ground, you're basically saying you don't care about America's past. We should say the pledge every day while looking at the flag with respect. We can also honor it by celebrating it on days like Flag Day and the 4th of July. Many soldiers died out on the battlefield for the hope that one day, America could become this free nation. The red coloring on the flag represents all their sacrifice and every drop of blood that they shed for us. These people are one of the many reasons why I'm proud to be an American. Just like many of our great leaders, we aren't afraid to stand up for what we believe in. Just take Martin Luther King, for example. In his heart, he knew that African Americans had just as many rights as white people did. He knew that the color of your skin didn't matter and he wasn't afraid to make a stand. The flag symbolizes everything America's been through from the 13 colonies to where we are today. I agree with John Thune. Our flag isn't just cloth and ink. It tells stories and inspires songs, artwork, poems, and more. It's the motivation for many and it's the foundation on which our country was built. Therefore, just like John Thune, I believe our flag is more than just cloth and ink. It is a universally recognized symbol that stands for liberty and freedom. It is the history of our nation and it's marked by the blood of those who died defending it. Thank you. Good morning, judges, audience, and fellow contestants. Today, we join together to share a love of our country and to tell what we think makes it great. To me, many of the reasons that make our country great are also ways in which our country leads the rest of the world. But today, I would like to focus on just one of those attributes, and that is freedom. We have the ability to make choices that will change our futures. Essentially, anything is possible. To some, 
This may just sound like a childhood fairy tale, but to me, it sounds like hard work, determination, and a bit of faith. Did you know that more than half the world's population does not live in a free country? Could you imagine that? Here in America, we are truly blessed because we are completely free. We have the ability to choose our own leaders and we can say, think, and believe whatever we want. In other countries, people spend years of their lives in jail or they disappear altogether just because they question their leader. I believe that George Washington puts it best saying, quote, in this nation, the love of liberty is interwoven with every ligament of American hearts, close quote. Our freedom is like an unquenchable thirst. It can never be taken away and our passion for it never diminished. This is why we have elected officials. We can choose our own religion, voice our own opinion, and write the news as we interpret it. We're also a nation that has a civilian court and where they get the general population to vote on certain matters. Not that many people get this opportunity in life. This is just another reason why we are richly blessed here in America. But here in America, we are also a nation founded on dreams. There are those in life who will push you down and tell you you can't get back up. Your family was poor, your father a factory worker. So that means you're not gonna go anywhere in life. But I think differently. America is the only place where you can become anything that you want. Will it always be easy? No, but it is possible because we are truly free. And you can become anything like a doctor, an architect, or a chef. Or maybe an immigrant can become an actor and later the governor of California. <laughs> Here in America, your biggest restriction is your will. Are you willing to work three jobs and go to school at the same time? Will you put forth the extra effort to go above and beyond what is asked of you? If you are, then here, you will get where you are looking to go. Because here, we don't care what your family has done before you or what the circumstances you were born into, only what you are willing to do. This is the principle that founded America, the willingness to work hard and fight for what you believe in. That's it. Our founding fathers wanted a better life and knew that they had to work hard to get it. This is the American way, working hard and not taking anything for granted. That's it. You need to make things happen in your life. Don't just wait for opportunities to come to you. Make a statement and give your family a good life. I would now like to leave you with the words of a British poet, William Ernest Henley. I am the master of my fate, and I am the captain of my soul. Thank you. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and success of liberty. This quote was said by John F. Kennedy to tell of the true American spirit and its liberty. This country has supported many countries. In World War I, Americans fought in Europe. In World War II, America took Britain's side and defended it. When Lebanon was considering its own civil war, America sent peacekeeping soldiers to offer help. Vietnam was opposed by many Americans, but those that went to fight did it obediently to save a people they never met. When World War II began, many Americans didn't want to be involved. Life in America was good and comfortable. The economy was fine, and, every, and people made a decent living. The idea of going to war on another side of the world would mean disruption to their way of life. But then, Pearl Harbor. Americans reacted with a loyal and patriotic spirit of their own. Then they went to war on two fronts. Europe, where Britain welcomed our support, and Japan, who wished us ill. Men volunteered to be soldiers. Women and young people helped collect foil, scrap metal, and rubber for constructions of planes, guns, tanks, and ammunition. As a result of much fighting in war, America suffered thousands lost to death. Americans remembered their soldiers with prayer vigils, blood drives, and by supporting each other. 
This is patriotism at its best. We are lucky that they saved our liberty and that we have this history in plain view. We don't have any excuse for our generation not to be patriotic. I mentioned earlier that Vietnam was opposed by many Americans. It was the conviction of one president, Lyndon Johnson, that we fight against communism in a little country called Vietnam. This country and its people weren't well known to Americans, and as the war progressed, American troops lost many battles and thousands of soldiers. Those that went to fight were the patriots. Patriotism is a choice made by each generation, and many good things have happened because of it. The patriot spirit roamed through the 50 United States of America with only one purpose, to create a people generous to the world, seeking to liberate other countries. Vietnam is considered a rare loss. Therefore, the people of that country have not experienced our freedoms. Many countries don't want the freedoms we have, so they aren't free to one riled across the plains as we Americans are. Patriotism is to stand up for the freedoms we have. That means taking resp responsibilities to live, study, and work hard. It's also the obligation of remembering those who fought and died to secure our freedom. We can speak, travel, and even worship our beliefs without any hardship in today's society. Another example of patriotism is a baseball player nonetheless. In the mid-1970s, some were discontented about America because it didn't serve them to their liking. As a protest against America, at Dodger Stadium shortly before a baseball game, two men ran with an American flag to the middle of the field. To everyone's astonishment, they lit the flag on fire. A player for the Dodger team, by the name of Rick Mundy, sprinted to the men and snatched away the flag before it was burned. This was a patriot who stood up for his country by defending the flag itself. Patriotism shown by those who soldier, by those who support our soldiers, and by actions like this not allowing our country to be spat upon. On July 4th, 1776, the United States of America became one country that stood together. The history of our country shows to other nations examples of gaining its own liberties, of standing shoulder to shoulder with other countries, of opposing oppressions and bringing liberties to the oppressed. The world has seen America united in war and divided in war, but patriotism has always been evident and liberties were restored. Let us not hold ourselves back in sharing with others the liberty that we rightfully so deserve and nothing will take away it. We will go through any challenge, we will go through any hardship to see that our country grow. Whether it be in Europe, whether it be in Vietnam, whether it be in Africa, we will confirm the success of liberty. It's now time to bring the spirit of patriotism back into the country. Citizens who lived long before our time gave up their lives to protect us, a people they never met. It is our time to do the same. Thank you. On January 1st, 1776, the Continental Army was recognized in agreement with the Congressional Resolution, which placed American forces under George Washington's control. On that very same New Year's Day, the Continental Army was laying blockade to Boston, which at this time had been taken over by the British Army. Washington ordered that the Grand Union flag be raised above his base at Prospect Hill. Therefore, in May of 1776, the famous Bethy Ross reported that she had sewn the first ever American flag. Now this was a pretty big deal. The flag's colors, as we know, symbolize something. The white represents purity and innocence. The red represents hardiness and valor. The blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. The stars symbolize of the heavens and the divine goal to which man has aspired from time to immemorial. Alternating between red and white, the 13 stripes represent the 13 original colonies. 
that's joined together to declare their, to declare their independence from Britain in order to establish themselves as a silver nation. Originally, the red, white, and blue had neither specific meaning nor representation when the flag was first adopted in 1777. The US flag is a banner in war, a heraldry in times of peace, and a symbol of every American's pride. The flag's colors aren't the only thing the flag symbolizes. It also symbolizes opportunity, hope, justice, and freedom. Our countrymen enjoy more freedoms than people in other countries do. Freedoms such as the freedom to vote without any discrimination on race or gender, the freedom of speech, the freedom to bear arms, the freedom of religions, and many more. We are so extremely lucky to have these rights when people of many other countries are still fighting for them and continue to fight for them each and every day. Some people believe that our citizens are forgetting how lucky we are, in which they are unaware of all of the advantages and privileges we have that other countries do not have. John Thune said, I believe our flag is more than just cloth and ink. It is a universally recognized symbol that stands for liberty and freedom. It is the history of our nation and is marked by the blood of those who died defending it. Close quote. People fought hard to defend our country, not only giving up their time, but by putting their lives at risk. They left everything behind, which puts us, as US citizens, in a position to respect and honor their effort. In conclusion, I am proud to be an American and always will be. I am especially grateful for everything the United States has to offer, including our rights, our privileges, our freedoms, and even the advantages that we have over other countries. We should respect and honor the flag as it represents the country that we live in. Americans are truly forgetting about these blessings, and the American flag is a reminder of those blessings. Which leads me to my next thought. <clears throat> Every time I see myself an American flag, I hold it in my heart as it not only reminds me to believe in my country, but also in myself. Have you ever been told that you are no different from, ev from everyone else? That you're just ordinary? Harry Emerson Fosdick once said, Democracy is based upon the conviction that there are extraordinary possibilities in ordinary people. Hello, my name is Madison Cole, and this statement is true. Let's examine this quote more closely. The definition of a democracy is a government by the people, either directly or through elective representatives. Conviction is a firmly held belief or opinion. Extraordinary is very unusual, remarkable, or unusually great. Possibilities are the potential for successful future development. And finally, ordinary, with no special or distinctive features. Using these definitions, we can restate the quote like this. A government by the people is based upon a firmly held belief or opinion that there are very unusual or remarkable potentials for successful future development in normal people. I think what Fosdick was meaning by this quote is that America wouldn't be the democracy it is today if we didn't have the potential to be extraordinarily different from other people. As Americans, we all have a freedom of choice, we have a purpose in life, and we have the potential to pursue and develop that purpose. Ever since I was young, I was told that everyone on the earth has a special purpose in life that only they can fulfill. If we didn't have any special purpose in life, then where would America be today? Steve Jobs would have never created Apple, Walt Disney would have never come up with Mickey Mouse, and he would have never said, around here, however, we don't look backwards for very long. We keep moving forward, opening up new doors and doing new things because we're curious, and curiosity keeps setting us down new paths. If we didn't have any special purpose in life, then Neil Armstrong would have never walked on the moon, and Michael Jackson would have never done the moonwalk. 
And without that special purpose, we wouldn't be able to be who we are or become who we want to be. Because we have freedom of choice, we can support what we want, be who we want to be, join anything we want to join, say what we want to say, and many more things. Try to think how many times you have changed your mind in this past week. I know I've changed my mind many, many times. I changed my mind about what clothes I should wear, how I should do my hair, and what I should eat for breakfast. I even changed my mind on what I wanted to say in the speech. I'm sure every one of us in here has changed our mind about what we want to be when we grow up. When we were five years old, some of us might say a rock star, a nurse, or a superhero. When we got older, maybe around nine, I might be a writer, an actor, or an actress, or an engineer. And because we are Americans, we have the right to be any one of those things. Brian Tracy, one of the top professional business and personal success speakers in the world today, said, the potential of the average person is like a huge ocean unsailed, a new continent unexplored, a world of possibilities waiting to be released and channeled towards some great good. We all have potential. We just need to find a way to liberate it. There's a children's book called Sid the Seed by Daniel R. Pagan. The story talks about a seed named Sid who is quiet at home. He has two friends who live with him in his tiny hole, a spider named Pip and a caterpillar named Kim. His friends plan to leave the hole to become something great. Soon, Sid is all alone in his tiny home until he decides that he needs to grow and find something new. Sid then drinks a lot of water and becomes a huge, stunning, amazing tall tree. This story te teaches America that they are full of potential and that if they decide to, put their minds to it, they can become something great. In conclusion, we live as common citizens in our democracy. However, we need to strive to accomplish the extraordinary that is placed before us in our ordinary lives. We are different. We have a choice in life. We have a purpose. But most of all, we have potential. My hope is that we can all reach our extraordinary potential. And together we can. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Taylor Heaney. Have you ever wondered how the USA has gone through many disasters, wars through the ages, even how we are united? Well, I'll tell you how. Patriotism. Patriotism unites everyone. Everyone everywhere has it. Everyone works together to keep our country united. A simple song called the Star-Spangled Banner explains us all. As you know, the US has gone through many catastrophic, event catastrophic events, such as the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. When President Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth on April 14, 1865, it was tragic. We didn't go crazy. We held ceremonies for him everywhere, and then we placed Andrew Johnson as our president. We fixed it without going into political chaos. Another horrible event was the terrorist attack on September 11, 2001. I'm sure you all know what happened here. Al-Qaeda, a group of terrorists, had taken four planes hostage. We crashed one in the Pentagon, two in the Tent Towers, one in each, and one was heading for the White House, but a hostage had flown it into a field, <laughs> sacrificing his life and many, uh, many others on the plane to save many others. After this, it was tragic that many were left dead. Our country came together to fix this. We held ceremonies for everyone. We even made a shrine. Well, we all came together to unite our country. One statement or verse in the Star Spangled Banner says, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. I think that just stands for war. But no, it stands for just about anything. Our flag will always be up. It will never be taken down for anything. Our country will always be united. All of the wars through the ages have helped our country come together. We have won some, we have lost some. Our country, united with patriotism, never gives up. The Civil War is a major example of where we showed patriotism. Our country was split for many years into the Confederate and the Union side. Horrible, right? Well, after all the battles, such as the Battle of Cold Harbor, where the Confederates had won, and the Battle of Gettysburg, where the Union had won, the Union had come out on top. Slavery was abolished, and the US has come back together. 
Another great example of war where we showed patriotism was World War II. I'm sure most of you here remember or know about the bombing of Pearl Harbor. This was a horrible battle for the USA. Many deaths occurred during this war. Our country came together. People donated their time and their lives to the military. Patriotism in our country united everyone. A verse in the Star Spangled Banner says, Oh, say does that Star Spangled Banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. That is us. We are the home of the free and the land of the brave. Another question comes to my mind. How did the states come together to unite us as a country? How are we even declared a real country? Well, everyone everywhere has it, patriotism. Such as when Columbus had left Britain to accidentally find America. After the years, America has developed. We have many states, and we have thousands and even millions of people. So much people and so many, so, many, so much patriotism. That's what makes and declares our country a real country, in my opinion. The purpose of my speech was to help you understand how the USA has survived through the disasters, forced through the ages, and how we are still, not, still united up to this day. The USA is explained in one simple song called the Star Spangled Banner. It's about how we come together and will always stay together through the ages. I say, get up, get out, and help make the USA a better place for everyone. It only takes one person to change everything. Thank you for listening and have a great evening. Crawling across a field of mud and ash, years pass as you move silently through the long, moist grass. Your mind is severed from the outside world, avoiding the sounds of men crying out in unimaginable pain, praying to God to take them and remove their suffering, not processing the eyes view of dead and disembodied, disembodied humans or the blood splattered on everything, ignoring the feeling of the warm red liquid beneath you as you slither along the ground or the touch of a soldier destined to die, grabbing you, pleading for help. The scent of metallic blood and the sulfuric smell of gun smoke fog the air, yet the aroma does not reach your nose nor your conscience. You move on, focused on your mission and your ultimate goal of seeing home again before you perish. Suddenly, you feel burning in your stomach. Agony courses through you. You no longer crawl, but cry out for mercy. Finally. All you feel is bliss, as all of your life's essence is given to death for America. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and fellow contestants. All gave some and some gave all are lyrics to a song by Billy Ray Cyrus, describing people's contribution to war. The verse showed patriotism when it was first published as a song after the Vietnam War, and even now as we fight a war in Afghanistan. The song Some Gave All by Billy Ray was written after the Vietnam War and it told a story of some soldiers' service and a few soldiers who gave the ultimate sacrifice. The Vietnam War was brutal as the Vietnamese used guerrilla warfare on American soldiers and innocent children as bait to lure the soldiers into helping the young, crying kids. Then, we caught an explosion of a bomb set off by one of the children. Sometimes the bomb would take an arm or a leg, and other times it would take a life. Many soldiers would lose their friends while fighting these invisible enemies and wish they would have died with them because the war was an up and down roller coaster of mental and physical pain. About three million people served in the Vietnam War. 150,000 were wounded and almost 60,000 men died. Everyone who served gave up something for America, but those who lost their lives gave it all for America. The verse, all gave some and some gave all, embodies patriotism because it is the glorious truth of war and sacrifice. The efforts of those American soldiers shall not be in vain because the American people praise them and their service. In the recent years, we've been at war in Afghanistan. Many of our soldiers are coming home, but almost 3,000 will never come back. Unlike the Vietnam War, the way of fighting has become more advanced and more tragic. A soldier can be walking in a village one moment and then be in the middle of a war zone the next, trying to escape the chances of death by a mind or a deadly sniper bullet. He looks for cover. 
The villagers are just dead masses to men, the men America calls enemies. They do not care if or when the villagers die. American troops travel the Afghanistan country when the weather can reach 120 degrees, looking for their targets or on a mission. These men and women give up their lives for us and the years they could spend with their kids, wife, husband, friends, or parents. When they return home, many of, the, many of these soldiers have post-traumatic problems and memories that are forever engraved into their minds. All of these soldiers gave some, and some soldiers gave their all. Some may not return home to the arms of loved ones, yet that family can go on knowing that that man or that woman died for America. The verse, all gave some and some gave all, are a few words that could describe war. They hold patriotic meaning because those men and women who serve our country are patriotic. Their efforts are made to ensure the safety of all Americans. Without them, America could never be as successful as it is now, or it will be if they do not serve. We as Americans need to show love and compassion for our country because all gave some for America. And more importantly, some never to be forgotten gave their all. Thank you. Welcome parents, fellow contestants, and judges. Imagine having to pack up all your belongings and go into hiding. You can't go outside, play your video games, watch TV, or even log on to Facebook. Your only connection to the outside world is a small, static radio. You would live in fear that if anyone heard or saw you, you might end up dead. Anne Frank grew up like this. Anne was born in Holland into a Jewish family. When she was 13 during the Holocaust, her and her family were forced to almost disappear off the face of the earth, hiding away from the Nazis. Her diary during the time was published years later. She and her family had to give up everything, including their freedom, just because they were Jewish. It is easy to take liberty for granted when you had never had it taken from you. This quote, once said by Dick Cheney, was directed at Americans to appreciate the United States military. Most Americans don't realize that we have rights other countries don't, because we believe in democracy and diplomacy. Most Americans take their freedom for granted, because they are born into it. Although Dick Cheney was speaking about the military, I believe this quote means we as Americans need to step back and realize how blessed we really are. Freedom for Americans means being able to get up, get in your car, and drive to the job that you chose. And maybe even on your way, passing by many different types of churches and choosing one to worship at. It means being able to hold a gun in your home in case of an attack. Or even being able to tell a stranger on the street your opinion about a popular topic. Unfortunately, Many people had this loss of freedom. Because liberty is so important, our freedoms are protected in the very first amendment of the US Constitution. Unfortunately, Anne Frank wasn't the only one that had a loss of freedom. It wasn't until 1979 that a few Americans realized what this was really like. 1979 was the year of the Iranian hostage crisis. An angry mob of Iranians gathered outside of the U.S. Embassy in Iran. They were infuriated that the U.S. had offered their hated leader exile. They demanded that he be returned to their country to be tortured and killed for his wrongdoings. They began taking American hostages. These people were held for 444 days. Imagine going about your day when someone walks in and points a gun to your head, they tell you what to do and you have no control of anything around you. You are now a hostage and they dictate your every move. Now put yourself in the Iranian shoes. What would make you so mad you would want to torture and kill the leader of your country? 
mad enough to take to the streets with guns, and so angry you would want to threaten the lives of innocent people. They became this belligerent because their leader mistreated them, leaving them poor and hungry. This man could do this because there are no laws against him mistreating his people, and he had no boundaries. The people attacked because they felt they had no freedom and no other way to fight for their rights. I don't support the Iranians' attack, but I do understand their anger. When I think of what Mr. Cheney said, it is easy to take liberty for granted, you had never had it taken from you, I can't help not to think of Anne Frank and the American hostages. All the people that I have spoken of today has had their freedom taken from them because it wasn't protected. I am proud to say that the Founding Fathers and the U.S. military have fought hard to protect our citizens so that kids like me can be free. These people made me realize that we should be thankful for and value our easily gained freedom. Thank you for this opportunity. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Believe it or not, this past month, I sent and received 5,213 texts, and I spent 372 minutes talking on my cell phone. Every week, I attend either a student council or NJHS meeting where I help plan and discuss important matters concerning my school and student body. I also like to argue with my brother and complain to my parents. So my life pretty much revolves around engaging in some form of communication. And communication is really just another word for speech. So obviously, the amendment that most affects my life is the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's really the First Amendment, the amendment that protects my freedom of speech. Although the First Amendment is the amendment that most protects my life, it is an amendment that most people, including myself, often take for granted. It is not until we hear stories about people who do not have the freedom of speech that we fully appreciate how important the First Amendment is to our American way of life. One recent story that serves as an excellent example of this involves a 14-year-old girl named Malala Yousafzai. Malala lives in Pakistan, and the area in which she lives is controlled by a terrorist group called the Taliban. The Taliban is known for its brutal repression of women, and it strongly opposes the education of girls. Malala wrote a blog about her life under the Taliban rule, and she spoke out in favor of education of girls. In response to her brave speech, a Taliban gunman boarded her school bus and in cold blood shot her in the head and nearly killed her. Unlike me and other girls in the United States, Malala had no freedom of speech, and it almost cost her her life. Once we look for examples of how the First Amendment has affected our lives, we realize that there are a lot of them. All you need to do is open a history book to learn how the freedom of speech has been instrumental in advancing civil and political rights that have benefited us all. For example, less than 100 years, years ago, women could not vote. In order to advance their cause, women suffragists like Alice Paul picketed the White House and organized rallies and marches. All of these activities are forms of speech, which are protected by the First Amendment. And this speech eventually convinced America to pass the 19th Amendment, which guaranteed women the right to vote. Although I joked about it before, the First Amendment even applies to students just like me. If you have any doubts about this, just ask Mary Beth Tinker. In the 1960s, Mary Beth decided to wear a black armband to school to protest the Vietnam War. The principal at Mary Beth's school, however, told her to take the armband off or she would be suspended. She took the armband off, but the principal suspended her anyways. Unhappy with her treatment, Mary Beth challenged the principal's decision all the way to the United States Supreme Court. In deciding her case, the Supreme Court found in favor of Mary Beth and held that her expression against the war, even though made by a student, held First Amendment rights akin to pure speech. 
We all like to talk and speak our minds. And here in America, the right to do so is protected by the First Amendment. I'm sure a lot of people who don't live here in America really wish that their speech was protected by the First Amendment. And all of us who do live here in America should be very glad that our speech is so protected. The First Amendment enhances all of our other rights and freedoms and makes our country a better place. And it allows me to send as many texts as I want, so long as I delete them before my dad reads them. Thank you.